I think the main thing is just uh, getting players that fit our culture, um, getting players that want to do right, want to do the extra. But in terms of just physical, physical skills, uh, we need to weaponize the offense. We need to be faster and more explosive on defense. And, you know, height, weight, speed, um, playmaking ability, there'll be definitely an emphasis on those things. That was Elliot Wolf on Tuesday talking about how he wants to weaponize the offense. Here's a look at some of the offensive weapons the Patriots could look to add in free agency. A wide receiver, Mike Evans, Michael Pittman Jr., Calvin Ridley for running back, Saquon Barkley, though he might get tagged. Josh Jacobs, Derek Henry, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, and then Dalton Schultz and Noah Fant at tight end, which brings us to the Daily Throw. we got Tom Giles, Phil Perry, Albert Breer, of course, are at the Combine. Phil, of those free agents, any of them stand out to you and say, yeah, I'd like the Patriots to go out and sign that guy, spend a little money on him? Yeah, I think Calvin Ridley makes sense in that he gives you potentially number one receiver upside. He's somebody you can move around, play at a variety of different positions. He gives you some explosiveness. Mike Evans, he's been a thousand yard re receiver every year of his career, so he's kind of been explosiveness personified, but I don't see him going to New England from Tampa Bay when the Patriots don't have a quarterback. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, Michael Pittman's a great player. He's not all that explosive. So if you want to mm -hmm. weaponize things, he's more of a short to intermediate, quote unquote, weapon. Yeah. Uh, Ridley, to me, because of the upside, um, would be interesting. And I don't think he cost you a ton, Bert, because he didn't play football two years ago. Yeah. And there's not a huge backlog of success there for him. I love Ridley as a player. Um, he's a little older, though. People don't realize he was like 24 when he came in the league. he's 30 years old this yeah, season. Yeah. So, like, that's the one issue is that he's a little bit older. So you'd have to be comfortable with that. That's sort of what I like about Pittman. Pittman's a little younger, so there might be some upside there. And you bring him in and you say, okay, this could be a guy who's here for the next five years. And here's a guy who can – grow with our young quarterback and maybe get our young quarterback some easy completions because he is the short to intermediate guy. Again, I think you got to build it differently than you have. And the Patriots have gone years without the, you know, take the top off the defense guy that most teams have to stretch the field and play with the geometry of football, you know, like so, um, you know, I think you have to feel confident that whatever you get in a receiver, um, you know, you put that in place and then you get something else in the draft. And the good news is, this year's draft class is not only really good at the top with Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze, but also has a lot of depth. And there are a lot of real fast guys who should be available in the second and third round of that position. Do you have a favorite? And do you th and, and is there a position? Even if you, like, yeah. a name doesn't stand out, is it like, I really want to get that position in free agency to shore some things? So I, I feel like the wide receiver is going to be kind of tough to, to sell. It's going to be tough to sell uh, any of those free agents as far as it could, you might even have to overpay for one of those three wide receivers. So that's why I'd be more inclined to, you know, go the route that Burt's talking about there, try to draft a receiver, even if it's day two, day three, and try to hope that you hit on one. I would, the running back, like the running back position there, even if it's just like a one to two year deal, you know, if you think about it, that that's going to be short term, short money. So maybe it costs you 10 to $15 million, but I don't know. Saquon Barkley's used to playing on bad teams, getting a ton of touches. Why not sign him up? Yeah, which position would you guys would you guys target of those skill positions? Because I think we all agree that maybe that definitely offensive line has got to be at the top of every list to draft or free agency. Yeah, yeah, I think offensive line is number one, no question. And I, and I I think you you really again like you want to try to come out of free agency with five competent starters. And I'm not saying they need to be your starter for the next five years, but five competent starters. So you don't have to reach in the draft. And because if you are going to take a quarterback up high, there's no assurance that when you get to the second round, there's going to be a guy who's capable of being a starting left tackle from day one out there for you. Um, and then after that, I don't hate the idea of going out and adding it running back, Phil. Like, you know, if you're have, having Ramondre Stevenson back as your feature back, you have a little injury history there. And I do think one of the things that can really help a young quarterback is having a competent running game and keeping yourself in second and six and third and two and not putting him in situations where, um, you know, he's going to have to dig himself out of an unmanageable spot. And so, um, you know, I sort of remember, um, God, this is 16 years ago when Matt Ryan was drafted. And one of the things Thomas Dimitrov did was sign Michael Turner from the Chargers. And Michael Turner became one of the most important players in that roster the next year because it helped them manage Matt Ryan. No question. I, I do start on the offensive line as well, though. And if it means re-signing Mike Owenu, maybe mm -hmm. even overpaying for Mike Owenu, make sure you keep him around. Jonah Williams, to me, is not anybody's idea of an all-pro at left tackle, but he can play left tackle, mm -hmm. and he can play at a competent level. And so those are the positions, to me, that I think you probably end up spending the most money on. 
running back, tight end. These are uh, relative to the rest of the league and what's being spent on the offensive side of the ball. These are spots that you should be able to fill relatively cheaply. Well, guys, Elliot Wolf will have a final say on a lot of these moves right now. And